gentlemen, at this time, I would like to introduce to you Ms. Rochelle Harrod, Disabilities Advocate. Good morning, everybody. I said good morning, everybody. I can't hear you. And, uh, right. Right. All right. In 1986, Prince George's County founded the Commission for Individuals with Disabilities. The mission of the commission is to bring together businesses, residents, and the government of Prince George's County to discuss and resolve disability issues in the county. The commission also works with county, state agencies, and other commissions to jointly address and promote the needs and rights of persons with disabilities. In addition, the commission helps to ensure that the county is meeting the requirements of the Americans with Disabilities Act by working to improve services to residents of Prince George's County, such as accessibility, community services, education, employment, housing, recreation, transportation. That being said, today we have language interpreters and closed caption services to assist our hearing impaired guests. Have a great time today. It's been an honor. God bless. Thank you so much for your participation and your advocacy, Ms. Harrod, on behalf of individuals with disabilities. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, please join me in welcoming today's Mistress of Ceremony, Dr. Charlene Mickens-Dukes, President Emerita, Prince George's Community College. Dr. Dukes served Prince George's Community College as the president from July 1st, 2007 to August 10th, 2020. Her illustrious career spans 42 years and she is highly respected and regarded for her vast educational professional acumen. Dr. Dukes is the recipient of numerous accolades and awards for her achievements and her contributions to higher education and the greater community. Most recently, she was named a 2022 Laureate and inducted into the Washington Business Hall of Fame. Dr. Dukes is the founder and the principal of Dukes Group LLC a higher education consulting firm specializing in executive coaching, board development, strategy and planning, equity and inclusion, and advocacy. Dr. Dukes is a graduate of Indiana University of Pennsylvania. She received her master's and her doctoral degrees from the University of Pittsburgh. She is a lifetime member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated and a member of the Prince George's County, Maryland chapter of the Lynx Incorporated. Please join me in welcoming your mistress of ceremony, Dr. Dukes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The day of great anticipation has finally arrived. Please welcome the processional.
We are ready for the processional to begin. You look good. You may be seated. So join me in welcoming 
the returning and newly elected members of the Prince George's County Council. So we are going to take a brief pause and allow you all to continue to get to know one another. And when you see me approach the podium again, we'll begin. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the Prince George's County Executive Elect, Angela Also Brooks and her daughter, Alexandria Alex Also Brooks Laney. Thank you. You may be seated. So it is a great Monday morning here in Prince George's County. The day of great anticipation has finally arrived. Welcome to the 14th inaugural ceremony for the Prince George's County Executive and the Prince George's County Council members. As you've already heard, I'm Charlene Dukes, and I am absolutely Prince George's proud and honored to serve as your mistress of ceremonies for this most auspicious occasion. In accordance with the Prince George's County Government Charter, on the first Monday in the month of December, newly and re-elected leadership are to be administered the oath of office for the Office of County Executive and members of the County Council. And the most important thing is that these oaths are to be witnessed by and for the people of Prince George's County. This is a significant and historic occasion for all in attendance. It is also the first time in the county's history a woman has been re-elected to serve as the Prince George's County Executive. And the first time in our history to have two re-elected county council members at large. Most importantly, today's 14th inaugural ceremony represents the effectiveness of democracy. Here in Prince George's County, the effectiveness of democracy. Yes, I am talking about the power of the people and the next new exciting chapter for the people of Prince George's County, Maryland. Thank you, each one of you, those who are with us today and those who could not be with us, for casting your vote of confidence in these highly esteemed individuals to lead based upon their extraordinary qualifications and with the understanding that as public servants, they will be upstanding, purposeful, compassionate, diplomatic, and steadfast in collectively serving and representing the voices of all Prince Georgians, so that continuing to move the county forward is always their top priority. The time is now to turn the page and begin the county's new chapter. So distinguished guests, without further ado, it is my special privilege to formally introduce the soon to be sworn in, re-elected, and newly elected Prince George's County Executive and members of the Prince George's County Council. Now, I am going to ask to uh, stand to receive them if you are able as I call their names. I am also going to ask because I know we're all excited for every one of these individuals on stage. However, please hold your applause and, and you're screaming so that everyone's name is clearly heard. So thank you for doing that for me. And we're going to uh, begin. So 
um, and they are reminding me that the request is challenging, but it's dictated by the interest of time, and again, to ensure that everyone's name is heard. So, representing the legislative branch of Prince George's County government, the Prince George's County Council members elect the Honorable Calvin S. Hawkins II, Chair and at large member joined by his wife, Angie Reese Hawkins. If you will stand. Okay, even hold the um, low screaming. Thank you so much. And your grandson, Joshua Plummer. Joshua Plummer. Thank you for being with us. Next, we have the Honorable Mel Franklin, at-large member, joined by his father, Dr. James Franklin, Sr. Thank you. We have the Honorable Thomas E. Donoga, District 1, joined by his wife, Lenora Donoga. Thank you. The Honorable Juanika B. Fisher, District 2, joined by her father, Andrew Fisher. Thank you. So we know whose family that was, right? <laughs> we have the Honorable Eric C. Olson, District 3, joined by his wife, Sarah Trito. Thank you. The Honorable Ingrid S. Harrison, District 4, joined by her fiance, Ron Watson, Senator, District 23. The Honorable Jolene Ivey, District 5, joined by her husband, Congressman-elect, Glenn Ivey. We have the Honorable Walla Legay, District 6, joined by her cousin, Nathaniel Massaqua Legay. Thank you. We have the Honorable Crystal Oriata, District 7, joined by her mother, Ann Oriata. Thank you. And we have the Honorable Edward P. Burroughs III, District 8, joined by his father, Edward P. Burroughs, Jr. Thank you. The Honorable Sidney J. Harrison, Vice Chair, District 9, joined by his mother, Iona Harrison. Thank you. And so we can all now give them a rousing round of applause. And representing the executive branch of Prince George's County government, the Honorable Prince George's County Executive Elect, Angela D. Also Brooks, joined by her daughter, Alexandra Alex Also Brooks Laney. Thank you. Now that everyone has graced the stage and been formally introduced, we shall officially begin the 14th inaugural swearing-in ceremony. So everyone has taken their seats, and what we will do is uh, announce at this time, we welcome Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley of Alfred Street Baptist Church in Alexandria, Virginia, who will deliver the invocation. <laughs> Reverend Dr. Wesley. I invite you, as may be your custom, to bow with me in prayer. God, we gather in this space today grateful for the brand new mercies that met us this morning and the sufficient grace that awaits us throughout this day. We come to this space of inauguration in the spirit of Advent, reminding ourselves that you are always with us. And as long as your presence is among us, there is hope. So we come to this space with hope for our nation, hope for our state, and hope for this great Prince George's County. We come thankful for those whose hand your life has blessed through the voice and vote of the people of this county, some to begin and others to continue their journey as servant leaders. I ask, O oh God, that you'd grant them wisdom for the difficult decisions that await them. Faith 
to believe that the best is yet ahead. Vision to be able to see your image in all of your created individuals. Love to care not only for the wealthy, but for the least of these among us. Courage to do that which is right and not always popular. And protection upon their lives and their families from all hurt, harm, or danger that would befall them in their time of service. Remind them as you speak to us now the words of the great theologian Howard Thurman, that the power of prayer is always connected to our willingness to be part of your answer. We ask now that you allow them to be part of your answer. And this I ask in the name of my Christ and my Savior. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you for that uplifting prayer, Reverend Dr. Wesley. Next, we will have the presentation of colors. So please stand and remain standing. Kindly remain standing for the national anthem performed by soloist and award-winning urban Latin artist, Jay Chris. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through who the perilous fight, o'er oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave? the land of the free and the home of the brave, the brave. Thank you so much, Jay Chris, Latin urban artist. So our Pledge of Allegiance will be given next by Captain Jocelyn Pastora Diaz, a student and member of the Oxen Hill High School Air Force Junior ROTC. She will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance in English and Spanish. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Yo prometo lealtad a la bandera de los Estados Unidos de América y a la república que representa una nación bajo Dios, indivisible, con libertad y justicia para todos.
Thank you. You may be seated. We do want to thank our public safety color guards representing the police, fire, EMS, sheriff, and corrections departments for their joint presentation of colors. We certainly want to thank our soloist, Jay Chris, and our student for leading us in both English and Spanish in the Pledge of Allegiance, Captain Pastora Diaz. So at this time, I want to acknowledge some special guests and elected officials and those who have come from across the region to bear witness to today's installation. Now, there are eight pages of special guests. So we're going to do something a little differently. And especially when you have the microphone, all of that can happen. So first we're going to acknowledge our Lieutenant Governor, Boyd Rutherford. Thank you for being with us. <laughs> Senator Chris Van Hollen, Senator Ben Cardin, Congressman Steny Hoyer. <laughs> Congressman and Attorney General-elect Anthony Brown. Prince George's County State's Attorney Aisha Brave Boy. Prince George's County Interim Sheriff Darren Palmer. Register of Wills, Sarita Lee. All of our state senators who are with us today, please stand and be recognized. Our state delegates who are with us, please stand and be recognized. Our municipal officer, officials, I'm sorry, who are with us, please stand and be recognized. The Democratic Central Committee, please stand and be recognized. Dr. Monica Golson, the CEO of the Prince George's County Public Schools. The Prince George's County School Board. Dr. Felicia Williams, the president of Prince George's Community College. The Board of Trustee members here from Prince George's Community College. Our circuit and district court judges. District of Columbia Mayor Muriel Bowser, the Honorable Muriel Bowser. Colonel Todd E. Randolph, Commander Joint Base Andrews. Brigadier General Janine Burkhead with the Maryland National Guard. If there are other elected officials with us today from the District of Columbia and the region, please stand to be recognized. And I'm going to ask you one last time as an audience, will you please stand? We have recognized every dignitary in the room. Thank you so very much for that. We do want to um, acknowledge the Oxen Hill uh, High School Junior ROTC cadets who are helping with today's ceremony by assisting and directing you to your seats. We want to acknowledge our outgoing and most recent former county council members. We want to thank you as, de as dedicated public servants for your visionary leadership, your ingenuity, and your constituent services. So I would like to call these names. The Honorable Denny Tavares, District 2. The Honorable Danielle Glaros, District 3. The Honorable Jonathan Medlock, District, District 6. The Honorable Rodney C. Streeter, District 7. And our former council members, the Honorable Todd Turner, District 4. The Honorable Derek Leon Davis, District 6. And the Honorable Monique Anderson Walker, District 8. At this time, I would like to welcome the Honorable Mahasan El Amin, Clerk of the Circuit Court, who will now join me at the podium. 
and this will begin the swearing-in ceremony for the Prince George's County Council members at large as well as elected and newly, uh, I'm sorry, returning and newly elected uh, council members. So we will begin with the Honorable Mel Franklin, Prince George's County Council member at large and his family members who are with him. I, I state your name. Jamel Franklin. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And that I will be faithful. And that I will be faithful. And bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland. And bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And that I will and that I will support the charter and laws support the charter and laws of Prince George's County of Prince George's County and that I will and that I will to the best of my skill and judgment to the best of my skill and judgment diligently and faithfully diligently and faithfully without partiality or prejudice without partiality or prejudice execute the office of execute the office of council member at large council member at large for Prince George's County for Prince George's County according to the constitution and laws of this state according to the Constitution and laws of this state and the Charter and laws of Prince George's County and the Charter and laws of Prince George's congratulations. County. congratulations <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. next we have the Honorable Calvin S. Hawkins II, Chair, Prince George's County Council, member at large, and his family members. Do solemnly affirm do solemnly affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States that I will support the Constitution of the United States and that I will be faithful and that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance and bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland to the state of Maryland and support the Constitution and laws thereof and support the Constitution and the laws thereof and that I will and that I will support the charter and laws of Prince George's County. And I will support the charter and laws of Prince George's County. And that I will and that I will to the best of my skill and judgment to the best of my skill and judgment diligently and faithfully diligently and faithfully without partiality or prejudice without partiality or prejudice execute the office of execute the office of council member at large council member at large for Prince George's County for Prince George's County according to the Constitution and laws of this state according to the Constitution and laws of this state and the Charter and laws of Prince George's County and the Charter and laws of Prince George's County congratulations Next, please join us, the Honorable Thomas E. Dernoga, District 1, and his family members. Okay. 
Aye. Aye. State your name. Thomas Dernoga. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And that I will be faithful. And that I will be faithful. And bear true allegiance. And bear true allegiance. To the state of Maryland. To the state of Maryland. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And that I will. And that I will. Support the Charter and Laws of Prince George's County. Support the Charter and Laws of Prince George's County. And that I will. And that I will. To the best of my skill and judgment. To the best of my skill and judgment. Diligently and faithfully. Diligently and faithfully. Without partiality or prejudice. Without partiality or prejudice. Execute the office of. Execute the office of. Council member for District One. Council member for District One. For Prince George's County. For Prince George's County. According to the Constitution and laws of this state. According to the Constitution and laws of this state. And the Charter and laws of Prince George's County. And the Charter and laws of Prince George's County. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> The Honorable Juanika B. Fisher, District 2, and her family. Wanika Be Beatrice Fisher. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And that I will be faithful. And that I will be faithful. And bear true allegiance. And bear true allegiance. To the state of Maryland. To the state of Maryland. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And that I will. And that I will. Support the Charter and laws of Prince George's County. And that I will support the Charter and laws of Prince George's County. And that I will. And that I will. To the best of my skill and judgment and that I will to the best of my skill and judgment diligently and faithfully diligently and faithfully without partiality or prejudice without partiality or prejudice execute the office of execute the office of council member for district 2 council member for district 2 for Prince George's County for Prince George's County according to the Constitution and laws of this state according to the Constitution and laws of this state and the Charter and laws of Prince George's County and the Charter and laws of Prince George's County congratulations Thanks. Good job. <laughs> oh, thank you. So beautiful. I love you. The Honorable Eric C. Olson, District 3, and his family. On the other side. He's okay. You're seeing here on the other side. There we go. Switch places. There we go. And do you want to Eric C. Olson. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And that I will be faithful. And that I will be faithful. And bear true allegiance. And bear true allegiance. To the state of Maryland. To the state of Maryland. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And that I will. And that I will. Support the Charter and laws of Prince George's County. Support the Charter and laws of Prince George's County. And that I will. And that I will. To the best of my skill and judgment. To the best of my skill and judgment. Diligently and faithfully. Diligently and faithfully. Without partiality or prejudice. Without partiality or prejudice. Execute the office of. Execute the office of. Council member for District 3. Council member for District 3. For Prince George's County. For Prince George's County. According to the Constitution and laws of this state. According to the Constitution and laws of the state. And the Charter and laws of Prince George's County. And the County. Charter and laws of Prince George's County. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs>
the Honorable Ingrid S. Harrison, District 4, and her family. Scott Harrison do solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States that I will support the Constitution of the United States and that I will be faithful and that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance and bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland to the state of Maryland and support the Constitution and laws thereof and support the Constitution and laws thereof and that I will and that I will support the Charter and laws of Prince George's County support the Charter and laws of Prince George's County and that I will and that I will to the best of my skill and judgment to the best of my skill and judgment diligently and faithfully diligently and faithfully without partiality or prejudice without partiality or prejudice execute the office of execute the office of county council member for district 4 county council member for district 4 for prince george's county for prince george's county according to the constitution and laws of this state according to the constitution and laws of this state and the charter and laws of prince george's county and the charting laws of prince george's county congratulations thank you the Honorable Jolene Ivey, District 5, and her family. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And that I will be faithful. And that I will be faithful. And bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland. And bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And support the Constitution and the laws thereof. And that I will. And that I will support the charter and laws of Prince George's County. Support the charter and laws of Prince George's County. And that I will. And that I will to the best of my skill and judgment. To the best of my skill and judgment. Diligently and faithfully. Diligently and faithfully. Without partiality or prejudice. Without partiality or prejudice. Execute the office of. Execute the office of Council Member for District 5. Council Member for District 5. For Prince George's County. For Prince George's County. According to the Constitution and laws of this state. According to the Constitution and the laws of this state. And the Charter and Laws of Prince George's County. And the Charter and Laws of Prince George's County. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. I had the tough job. Yes, right? you did. <laughs> the Honorable Walla Blagay and her family. Okay. Yes, please. Oh. Okay. Left 
hand on the Bible. Raise your right hand. I'm sorry. I. I. State your name. Walla Kenwa on Yerichuku Massacoy Blagay. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And that I will be faithful. And that I will be faithful. And bear true allegiance. And bear true allegiance. To the state of Maryland. To the state of Maryland. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And that I will. And, I, and, I, and that I will support the charter and laws support the charter and laws of Prince George's County of Prince George's County and that I will and that I will to the best of my skill and judgment to the best of my skill and judgment diligently and faithfully diligently and faithfully without partiality or prejudice without partiality or prejudice execute the office of execute the office of council member for district 6 council member for district 6 for Prince George's County for Prince George's County according to the constitution and laws of the state and called, according to the constitution and laws of this state and the charter and laws of Prince George's County and the charter and laws of Prince George's County congratulations thank you <laughs> thank you so much Okay, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> the Honorable Chris, Crystal Oriata and her family. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And that I will be faithful. And that I will be faithful. And bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland. And bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And that I will. And that I will support the Charter and laws of Prince George's County. Support the Charter and laws of Prince George's County. And that I will. And that I will to the best of my skill and judgment. To the best of my skills and judgment diligently and faithfully diligently and faithfully without partiality or prejudice without partiality or prejudice execute the office of execute the office of council member for district 7 council member for district 7 for Prince George's County for Prince George's County according to the Constitution and laws of this state according to the Constitution and laws of this state and the Charter and laws of Prince George's County and the Charter and laws of Prince George's County congratulations Thank you so The Honorable Edward P. Burroughs III, District 8, and his family. Edward Paul Burroughs III, 
do solemnly swear do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States that I will support the Constitution of the United States and that I will be faithful and that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance and bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland to the state of Maryland and support the Constitution and laws thereof and support the Constitution and laws thereof and that I will and that I will support the charter and laws of Prince George's County support the charter and laws of Prince George's County and that I will and that I will to the best of my skill and judgment to the best of my skill and judgment diligently and faithfully diligently and faithfully without partiality or prejudice without partiality or prejudice execute the office of execute the office of council member for district 8 council member for district 8 for Prince George's County for Prince George's County according to the Constitution and laws of this state according to the Constitution and laws of this state and the Charter and laws of Prince George's County and the Charter and laws of Prince George's County congratulations <laughs> the Honorable Sidney J. Harrison, District 9, and his family. Sydney Jerome Harrison. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I'll support the Constitution of the United States. And that I will be faithful. And that I'll be faithful. And bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland. And bear true allegiance to the state, state of Maryland. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And that I will. And that I will. Support the charter and laws of Prince George's County. And that I will support the charter and laws of Prince George's County. And that I will. And that I will. To the best of my skill and judgment. To the best of my skill and judgment. Diligently and faithfully. Diligently and faithfully. Without partiality or prejudice. Without partiality or prejudice. Execute the office of. Execute the office of. Council member for District 9. Council member for District 9. For Prince George's County. For Prince George's County. According to the Constitution and laws of this state. According to the Constitution and laws of this state. And the Charter and laws of Prince George's County. And the Charter and laws of Prince George's County. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's do what we've all been wanting to do for the last several moments. Let's give our Prince George's County Council members a Prince George's round of applause. We needed to get all of that excitement and all of the emotion out of our systems. So it is my pleasure at this time to do two things before I make another introduction. I do want to recognize the Honorable Rashern Baker, our former county executive, and want to recognize our fire chief, Tiffany Green. So at this time, please join me as we welcome the Chair of the County Council and Member at Large, the Honorable Calvin S. Hawkins II, back to the podium to deliver his inaugural address on behalf of the Prince George's County Council.
Sharon Baker, I'm sure you like, what would MacGyver say this morning? <laughs> Good morning, Prince George's County. Motivated by my faith, I begin my remarks by thanking God for his grace, his mercy, and his great favor on Prince George's County. My friends, I would like to yield a moment of my time so that we could have a moment of silence for that great leader who the bells have told along with that other great leader who the bells have told, and that is our great Chief and Sheriff Melvin C. High, as well as State Delegate Tawana Gaines. Thank you for indulging me in that very important, a very important moment of silence. On behalf of the County Council, I want to acknowledge our family, friends, and guests. To all our partners gathered here today, county residents from the youngest to our most seasoned citizens, the many dignitaries that have been referenced earlier in elected leadership past and present, and members of our community and especially those who represent our clergy. We could not do this work without you, and we are deeply honored by your presence and continued support. I want to take a personal privilege to publicly thank Lieutenant Governor Boyd Rutherford for all the mornings, afternoons, and evenings that you were available to offer wise counsel to me over the last four years. Lieutenant Rutherford, your insight and mentorship was truly a bridge over some of the troubled waters that this council experience, especially the last two years under my leadership as chair. You, net, you did not let the politics of our different political party affiliation get in the way for your love of the state of Maryland and her 23 counties and the city of Baltimore. Thank you, Lieutenant Boyd Rutherford, for your demonstration of statesman qualities that we all could emulate. I am grateful to you. Thank you. If this were not a formal setting, I say brother man to brother man. I especially wish to thank all my family members and the volunteers of the People's Movement and the financial supporters that assisted not only me, all those who sit behind me as council members. I'm internally indebted and grateful to a wife who has put up with me for over the years we have been married and Angie, I want to thank you for being a part of this journey with me. I really would get in trouble if I didn't acknowledge my daughter, her son Joshua, my sister Colleen, Daryl, my brother, and all the family members who are here. Thank you very much. If you take a moment to look around you, you see this show, Place Arena, has been transformed to truly reflect this auspicious occasion. Please take a moment and look at this beautiful place. To those who made this possible, who planned this event, thank you very much. Your work speaks volumes for your commitment to excellence, and we are extremely grateful. Shortly, shortly, and I don't, won't be long, the Honorable Angela also Brooks, a courageous, competent, and conscientious leader with an unmatched ability to unite us as a county will be sworn in into a second term as Prince George's County Executive. <laughs> with the hand of our team leader in partnership and abiding faith in the essential goodness of the people of this county, we will make Prince George's County even greater for children whose faces we have yet to see. In that spirit, we also look forward to building a strong relationship with our historic, historic new governor, attorney general, comptroller, state legislators, and yes, the new strong voices who are joining this council for the first time. 
They call themselves, well, I'm going to stop, Council Members Juanica Fisher, Ingrid Harrison, Walla Begay, Krista Oriata, and Edward Burroughs, who got a bit of a start after a special election, as well as Eric Olson, who served two previous four-year terms on the council and is now returning as a part of this new body. Mrs. Olson, I pray for you often, and you would know why. If not, Eric, you would tell her later. Our electorate not only sent a strong message for a local government that acts for the will of the people, but voters also delivered a diverse group of council members to represent them as well. Joining me for a second term of office are council members Tom DeNoga, Jolene Ivey, and Mel Franklin. Also among them is council member Sidney Harrison, who served in the past year as my extraordinary vice chair. Vice Chair Sidney Harrison, you served with integrity, competence, loyalty, and transparency. I want all of you who serve as legislative chairs, presidents, or speakers, you could not have a second supporting you as, as Sidney Harrison supported me. I would have to say if you have someone like that, you are tremendously, tremendously fortunate. Thank you, Brother Vice Chair. I will always remember the road we travel, your loyalty, your confidence, and your transparency, even when you had to take me to the woodshed. We, yes, he did that pretty often. We are deeply grateful to our outgoing council colleagues, the Honorable Denny Tavares, Danielle Glaros, Todd Turner, Dirk Leon Davis, Jonathan Metlock, Rodney C. Streeter, and Monique Anderson Walker for their significant contributions to the many many marked achievements of this body. My friends, I'm compelled to say once again, thank you to the people of Prince George's County who, like me, believe in progress together. I stand today as a humble and honored as I was four years ago to be re-elected to serve you. As one of the two elected at large members of Prince George's County, I spent my time over the last four years traveling the east, the west, the north, and the south, traveling all 499 square miles of our beloved Prince George's County, a place that has witnessed transformation in all aspects of our lives. I've allowed my experiences to impact my services to ensure a better county committed to all people, no matter their background from which they come, the zip codes where you live, or the experiences that shape our lives. As chair of the council, while it is a privilege to lead, I also understand the responsibility that comes with the office, communication, collaboration, listening, learning, and acting in the best interest of all people, something I did every single day. Often, Apostle Mike Freeman, I use your brother's book, Dwayne's book, Leaders Listen, Learn, and Lead. And although that book it was like a Bible to me. Would you please let Dwayne know I'm still using it even to this day? My friends, just a few weeks ago, I was blessed to have the privilege alone with 36 additional invitees to accompany and travel with Prince George's County Executive Angela Alsobrooks to South Africa, specifically to the Royal Bafa King Nation. I joined with educators, artists, commerce, finance representatives, and government officials to further advance the sister-to-sister -sister agreement that Prince George's County government has with the Royal Bafa King Nation. We had an opportunity while there to visit Robbins Island, where Nelson Mandela spent the first 18 of his 27 years in jail at the brutal Robert Island prison. He was confined to a small cell without a bed or plumbing and was forced to do hard labor in a quarry. Once a year, he was allowed to meet with a visitor for 30 minutes and once every six months, he could write and receive a letter. This is the life for 27 years that the great Mandela lived. As the 36th member delegation absent my presence went to the prison to see the cell that Nelson Mandela lived in, I stayed out in the courtyard all alone. 
I experienced spiritual discernment when I sat in that courtyard all alone with Nelson and his comrades, freedom fighters in the war against apartheid, convened, communicated, and committed to a better, brighter, and blessed South Africa. They understood the hurdles, obstacles, and challenges that apartheid presented. Nelson Mandela and his contemporaries saw not ob obstacles, but opportunities to transform their confinement to a liberating conversations of the days to come, the yet to be, that will find them leading a nation through difficult days of post-apartheid. In that moment, as I sat in the courtyard all alone on the rugged bench where Mandela sat under the, un, under the grapevines that Mandela picked grapes from, I pondered the courage of men and women with a vision that became a reality. I could not help but think, my friends, about our beloved Prince George's County and the possibilities that await us if we collectively seize the moment. I contemplated in that very setting the potential of immeasurable positive outcomes as the county council and the county executive build upon the fast years to execute collectively over the next four years our shared vision. The question is, what is the shared vision, Calvin, that we hold for the beloved county we call home? Our first work is to engage in heartfelt dialogue Listening, listening intently to each other until we develop that shared vision. Not yours, not mine, but ours. Congressman Hoyer, that's what you told us in your Greenbelt office. We got to listen to each other if we're going to move our county and our state further. I did not miss that when you said it. You might say, why is that so important? Well, unless, unless you see what I see and I see what you see, it is impossible to move ahead on one accord. Shared vision will hold us together during the challenging and worthy journey ahead. Till the gain of six, shared vision will be the glue and the disciplinarian to keep us together and shared vision will also give us the grace to love and forgive one another when we have differences or cause for resentment. It will remind us that we are committed to something greater than all of us, the glorious future of Prince George's County, Maryland. When we, in partnership with our civic, municipal, state, and federal leaders, school board members, and so many others, come together for you, the people, to advance unwaveringly, unapologetically, the best of Prince George's County through our policy and our practice, I remain convinced that this is the next iteration of our time, the rightness of our time, the belief in our time. Four years ago, working with this county executive, we approved a $4.34 billion budget. Four years later, working with this county executive, we approved a record-setting $5 billion budget. You may ask, why is it important, Calvin? It allowed us to respond to the novel COVID-19 pandemic. We went from a challenging start to leading the region in our COVID response and received recognition for it. We address emergency rental assistance in partnership with our state and federal elected officials to support those devastated by the impact of COVID-19. All that was wrought upon our county, our state, and our nation, and our world. Prince George's County laws, Prince George's lost their jobs, much needed sources of income, and needed our assistance. Elected officials from the federal, state, and local level worked with the governments to step in to lend assistance. We partnered with nonprofits and supplied hundreds of thousands, yes, hundreds of thousands of pounds of food and other supplies to families and, and individuals and continue to do so to this very day. We supported local small business through funding and supported economic development projects that expanded the commercial base for our county. We have been the collaborative leadership that expanded health and human services programs and infrastructure projects that allowed us to remain true to our commitment to be protective of our environment as acknowledgement to and belief in climate change. We kept our economy vibrant by collaborating with public and private stakeholders. We saw parking planning, the Parking Planning Commission 
under the leadership of past chair Betty, Betty Hewlett guide development projects and others, keeping them on track and meeting their legal obligation and keeping with their charge. Thank you to the commission for your innovation leadership during one of the most devastating periods in the history of this county. With visionary leadership through the partnership with council administrator Robert Williams Jr., both entities maneuvered through uncharted waters, unimaginable changes, and unexpected cha challenges. We thank the county council staff that worked with the park and planning staff and the county executive staff to make this a reality. My fellow and sister citizens, we heard the call of the moment and we must continue to heed it. It was our responsibility to rise to the moment during these past four years. It is our responsibility to rise to the call these next four years. Let us remember the words of Micah, prayer phrase from chapter 6, verses 8. He has shown you what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, love mercy, and to walk humbly. Along the walk of humility, we will witness historic moments in this cycle, a gubernatorial leadership team of color, the first in the nation here in the state of Maryland. A woman elected to the first time, a woman elected for the first time to serve as comptroller, our own attorney general and state's treasurer, both of color and both Prince George's, and six newly elected council members joining five returning members like no other time in the history of Prince George's County, we have an opportunity to be unified, intentional, and galvanized for the good, advancing the merit of interests on behalf and for Prince George's County. In the iconic words of the late statesman, the Honorable Congressman John Lewis, let's get in some good trouble and work to ensure Congressman Hoyer, the FBI headquarters come to Prince George's County. Let that be the light to dim the darkness of the disappointment of previous years. Let's continue to get in good trouble by ensuring that the more than 139,000 students enrolled in the public school system have the resources and the environments that are needed and necessary to ensure world-class teaching and world-class learning. If we are going to keep Dr. Golson, let's give her what she needs. Let's support our county executive in ensuring that Monica Golson has what she needs to stay to do the great job that she's doing. Let's stay in good trouble by continuing to address issues of social justice and police reform by, deal by also dealing with the crime as we move forward. Good trouble calls out to us to ensure that our social services and health programs are expanded to ensure that all Prince Georgians benefit. Increase funding for mental health programs and homeless initiatives. Support the right to response to those in need. Let's remain in good trouble by working with our county executive and Dr. Dula to, more than, to support the more than 40,000 veteran, veterans who call Prince George's County home. They went into harm's way, arriving on foreign soil by air and land and sea to defend our democracy. Let us show our gratitude by continuing to meet their needs. County Zach, thank you for all that you do for them. Let's continue to get in good trouble as we continue the work we already started to expand opportunities for local, small, and minority-owned businesses right here in Prince George's County. Councilmember Franklin continue to take the lead in working with our county exec and council members to ensure Prince George's County doesn't leave anyone behind. As I close and take my seat, I must remind you in my own words four years ago that I would be a servant to the people of Prince George's County. I would never give up on you because you did not give up on me. Those were my words. It is my bond. I urge you in this moment not to give up on your loved ones and those closest to you who may be going through the changes and challenges of life, those who may bring embarrassment to your household. I'm the beneficiary of loved ones proved providing me hard love and unwavering support and as I journey through the troubling waters of recovery. To each and every one of you under the sound of my voice, whether you are a mother, a father, a grandmother, a grandfather, a husband, a wife, a daughter, son, sister, brother, 
aunt, uncle, niece, or nephew, cousin, or friend. I stand before you as a living example of what good can come from bad. Growing up, growing up in a single parent household in the Glass Manor community of Oxen Hill, a teenage parent at the age of 17 in a five year, nine month period of incarceration. The odds indicate that I should not have made it to this stage. I should not have this opportunity. The statistics say black men like me return to prison 99.7% of the time, two years after they get out. But thanks be to God that the prayer of the righteous and the love and care of family and so many of you ensured that I was able to overcome that which held me down to become a public servant of the people and for the people. My story is their story. Your loved ones who are going through some changes and challenges, their story is my story. We have come this far by faith, leading on the everlasting arm. If you shall not faint, your beloved prodigal sons and prodigal daughters will overcome and become the promise and the fulfillment of a people called out to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. Like Nelson Mandela, as I go to my seat, many days inside that prison cell, like he, I recited the words of Invictus, out of the night that covers me, black as a pit, from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the blundering of chance, my head is buddy but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade and yet the menace of the years. She'll find and she'll find me unafraid. My friends, it matters not how straight the gate how charged with punishments the scroll. I'm the master of my fate. I'm the captain of my soul. Thank you and may God bless each and every one of you. Oh, we've come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord and trusting in his holy word. Trusting in his holy word. And now, wouldn't it be just the right thing to invite to the stage Pastor Peggy Ireland of Faith United Methodist Church located in Akakeek, Maryland. She will now deliver a prayer of inspiration. What a beautiful day. Oh, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Lord of all, we come to you on this glorious morning with thanks and praise that you have blessed us to select strong and wise leaders, holy leaders to guide Prince George's County into a new day. We come with gratitude for our rich and proud history, for the opportunity we have to stand together to meet whatever challenges lie ahead. Guide us to embrace our diversity and to find strength in our unity and our compassion for our neighbor. Lord, continue to provide wisdom and courage to our county executive, Angela Also Brooks, as she and our incoming Prince George's County Council members lead us to whatever, whatever we may face in the days ahead. In your great mercy, 
continue to bless our leaders and all of us in this great proud county that we may truly act justly, that we may love mercy as you love mercy, and that we may walk humbly in your sight. May it be so. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Ireland, for that message. Whew. Come this far by faith. So it's my pleasure now to introduce the Prince George's County Executive Elect, the Honorable Angela D. Also Brooks. In November of 2018, Angela Also Brooks, a proud lifelong Prince Georgian, was elected as the eighth county executive for Prince George's County and the first woman to hold the position. The first, but not the last. Her administration has been committed to providing a world-class education system, safe communities, and a robust economy that creates jobs and opportunities for all. County Executive also Brooks knew from an early age that she wanted to give back to the community that raised her and gave a voice to those who might not otherwise have one. After graduating with her Bachelor of Arts in Public Policy from Duke University and her Juris Doctorate from the University of Maryland School of Law, she began her career as a Prince George's County Assistant State's Attorney in 1997 eventually becoming the county's first full-time prosecutor assigned to handle domestic violence cases. In 2010, she was elected to serve as the county's state's attorney, becoming the youngest and the first woman to be elected to the office. As the county's top law enforcement officer, she played a key role in public safety and strived to carry out her responsibilities in a firm, fair, and consistent manner. She is a member of the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. And ladies and gentlemen, if you give me some personal privilege, a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. She resides in Upper Marlboro with her daughter, Alex. Now, I would like to invite the Honorable Sheila Tillerson Adams, Administrative Judge for the Circuit Court of Prince George's County, Maryland's 7th Judicial Circuit, to the podium to administer the oath of office to Prince George's County Executive-elect, Angela D. Also Brooks. I, I Angela also Brooks, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And that I will be faithful. And that I will be faithful. And bear true allegiance. And bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland. To the state of Maryland. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And that I will, and that I will support the charter and laws of Prince George's County. Support the charter and laws of Prince George's County. And that I will, and that I will, to the best of my skill and judgment, to the best of my skill and judgment, diligently and faithfully, diligently and faithfully, without partiality or prejudice, without partiality or prejudice, execute the office of County Executive for Prince George's County execute the office of County Executive for Prince George's County. Maryland and according to the Constitution and laws of the state of this Maryland. Maryland and according to the laws 
to the Constitution. To the Constitution and laws of the state of Maryland. And the Charter and Laws of Prince George's County. And the Charter and Laws of Prince George's County. Congratulations. Thank you. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. I am so thankful to God for the opportunity to be here today and for his absolutely indescribable love and faithfulness. To my parents who are celebrating their 53rd wedding anniversary tomorrow, Thank you seems insufficient. Your sacrifices have made today possible. To my sister Kim, the truest ride or die I have ever known. I love you, girl. Since we were here four years ago, my daughter Alexandra headed to high school. And like her classmates, she would be forced to figure out adolescence in a global pandemic. To be sure, it wasn't easy. She experienced the same isolation and challenges that so many of our young people have felt during such a difficult time. But in true Alex fashion, my girl fought hard, slayed some dragons, and believed in herself even when she couldn't see the end. She earned the position of captain of her track team, started a womanism club, became president of the Mental Health Club, and capped off the hardest year of her life last year with a solid 3.8 grade point average. <laughs> Next year, I'll be so proud to send off to college an absolutely brilliant young woman who is my amazing daughter. And I can also say thank you, Alex, for being such a wonderful friend. Thank you. <laughs> to my colleagues in Prince George's County government, thank you for lending me your talents and lending as well the people of Prince George's County your extraordinary skills. You are truly the best team this side of heaven. To all of the wonderful members of the judiciary who have graciously joined us today, thank you so much for your service. To all of my partners in public service, thank you for your hard work that helped produce so much progress. Thank you to all of the council members as well who have labored with me over these past four years, and welcome and congratulations to the new members of the county council who are joining us for this new term. To my super bad campaign team and the people of Prince George's County, to everyone who wanted to continue walking along a path of progress together, thank you once again for placing your trust in me. These last four years, I've watched Prince George's County rise as if we worked to overcome hardship that we never could have imagined. Even in the face of so much adversity, our pride in this place we share became our power. For much longer than any of us have been on this earth, throughout our history, we've seen that when we move forward as a community in the face of adversity, we can do great things. At the start of this year, William Hall Academy unveiled a mural painted by local artist Ryan Allen. The mural contains a prominent red house that stands out from the west of the artwork. This is the Van Horn House, located in Capitol Heights. It was built in 1803 by Archibald Van Horn, former Speaker of the Maryland House of Delegates, former United States Congressman, and former slave owner. But something happened after the house's ownership changed hands. 
This former plantation house had a tunnel underground, a stop for people on the Underground Railroad seeking freedom. The house had the same intricate facade, the same bricks and mortar, but sometimes a place is more than the sum of its parts. The Van Horn House kept changing and became a symbol at the forefront of progress. It served as a hotel for black customers when other places turned them away. Intellectuals imagining a brighter future for our nation stopped here beginning in the 1940s. The house became a prominent gathering space for activists, a sacred stop on the path to change, where pride in this community was a guiding light. Four years ago, shortly after I became county executive, we coined the phrase, Prince George is proud. Proud because our history tells the beautiful story of an upward trajectory. When I think about how far we've come, I think about that red house on the hill. With our pride and determination, we went from a county that housed a symbol of oppression built by one of our nation's highest lawmakers to being the crown jewel of Maryland, a diverse and equitable community that happens to be the economic engine of the great state of Maryland. But now, Prince Georgians, I've stopped back by to finish the thought. Let there be no doubt that we're not only proud, we are powerful. We must use our power, however, to unite and uplift, regardless of race, gender, religion, or sexual orientation. We must use our power to break down barriers so our community works for everyone. We must use our power to create broad and growing access to opportunity for all people. Prince Georgians, that's what we've done these past four years, and I can promise you this, that's what we'll do for the next four years. When I took this stage four years ago, I talked about our goals on education, health care, and growing our economy. But one thing I didn't know I needed to talk about was, well, a global pandemic. At the beginning of 2020, just a little over a year into my first term, COVID-19 shook us to our core. We had a greater number of vulnerable residents, a higher number of essential workers, and in the beginning, the highest infection rate in the state. From the beginning, I spoke to the deep well of faith that resides in Prince George's and declared that COVID-19 would not have the final say. This was a time where isolation could have pushed us to go our own way. But Prince Georgians, I'm so proud of the way we worked as one community to fight back. We came together to protect the whole community, and we used our power to assist families and local businesses, leading Maryland's distribution of emergency rental assistance programs, helping over 9,800 households stay secure in their homes, and providing over $40 million in assistance to local businesses. We used our power to create an award-winning, innovative food distribution program that helped those who had lost their jobs and to help small businesses keep their doors open called Stand Up and Deliver. And since we launched it in May of 2020, we've given out 457,000 boxes of groceries, or 4.6 million meals. And we delivered an additional 4 million meals to our homebound seniors. <laughs> Prince George's County went from the highest infection rate in the state to the lowest, and some might say from the bottom to the top. And now we have one of the highest vaccination rates in the nation. Prince Georgians, we came together and flexed our power against COVID-19. And we still managed to make generational investments in housing, health care, education, and infrastructure. Now the whole state, actually the whole region, knows what I have long said to be true. You should never bet against a Prince Georgian because we are proud and powerful. 
Four years ago, I promised that when we labor together, our community will rise higher. We labored together and focused on education. We were the first in the state to create an alternative construction program, helping us address an $8 billion construction backlog and break ground on, hear it, 10 new schools in just the last two years. Now counties across the region are asking us how we did it. And we gave every employee in our school system the greatest salary increase in over 20 years. We labored together and modernized our government. We came into office and decreased the average 311 call response time from over four minutes to now just over 15 seconds. And, wait for it, we've been named the number one digital county in the United States for the second year in a row. We labored together and made massive investments in healthcare to improve the life of every resident in our county. We opened a new mental health and addiction care facility so that we can stop treating people with mental health and addiction crises in jail. We secured funding and broke ground on the county's very first cancer center. We're building a new inpatient rehab facility so that Prince Georgians can get the care they need right here at home. And now we're redeveloping the site of the old hospital in Cheverly, building new homes, new re restaurants, retail and businesses, and a new hotel for visitors. We labor together to invest in growing our economy on a scale our county has never seen before. Hear me on this when I say, we want the Washington commanders to stay in Prince George's County, but whether they stay or whether they go, let me be clear about one thing. We are going to invest in the communities around FedEx Field that have missed out on investments for far too long. Up and down the blue line, we're investing $400 million in a new amphitheater, a new cultural center, a new library, a new youth, youth sports field house, a new market hall, and a new civic plaza. We're making stops along the blue line, walkable and bikeable, creating new buildings for amenities, new homes and residents, and new places to grow our community. Prince Georgians, we labored together and invested in transportation projects to help move residents, including electric buses for our sassy seniors who like to stay active. At New Carrollton, we're opening new mixed-use housing with retail, restaurants, office space, and a hotel. We recently secured a raise grant from the United States Department of Transportation, which will help us build a new train station. These investments are transforming New Carrollton. And in fact, Prince Georgians, okay, since we're here all with family, can y'all promise to keep a secret? All right, I think you can. Well. Don't tell my good, good girlfriend, Muriel Bowser, but New Carrollton will replace Union Station as the new premier gateway to the National Capital Region. <laughs> Prince Georgians, we've come together to overcome every obstacle laid before us. Even now, we're working together to overcome new problems like the spike in crime that we've seen. When I served as state's attorney, I would visit felony crime scenes where children were victims. And as county executive, when a serious crime involves a child, I often still go. A call went out that a two-year-old was shot in an apartment this summer. So we met Chief Aziz on the scene. I saw a nine-year-old little girl wearing pink Crocs and a blood-stained unicorn shirt. She told me she was holding her baby sister when her sister was shot. I hugged this nine-year-old girl and I told her how brave she was. I could tell that she struggled to understand the tragedy that happened just hours before. And so she kept telling me, I, I tried to rub my baby sister's stomach. I was so devastated to learn from a family member that just two months before, this same nine-year-old girl's father had been shot to death. 
I knew this child didn't understand what happened to her or the toll that these tragedies were taking, not just in the moment, but the way this violence could shape the rest of her life. Too often, I find, we admonish people and we ask them, what's wrong with you? But we rarely ask the all-important question, what happened to you? When we make decisions about our criminal justice system, we cannot simply punish offenders. If it were that simple, we wouldn't have any crime. This little girl in her unicorn shirt didn't know what to do. But she rubbed her sister's stomach because she knew she needed to do something. We need to do something. How do we, as a county, use our power to make sure our most vulnerable residents aren't helpless against violence in our communities? How do we ensure that they aren't left to fight for themselves? We need to look at the evidence, be scientific, and use the information we have to develop solutions that include policing, but also include other types of support, like wraparound services to help vulnerable individuals access behavioral health care anti-violence programs that reach our vulnerable youth, and re-entry services that give people a chance to make a new life after serving their time. I reject the idea that there's anything normal about a child holding her baby sister after she's been shot. I reject that black and brown communities have a higher tolerance for violence of any sort. Prince Georgians, we will never develop a tolerance for violence. So far, we've enacted a successful youth curfew. We created the Office of Returning Citizens Affairs to support reentry efforts. And last year, we launched an anti-violence initiative called Hope in Action, thank you, Pastor Tony Lee, to give at-risk youth and young adults across the county opportunity and to interrupt cycles of violence with hope. Every opportunity is a new way forward for someone. Something as transformational as a new mentor, an apprenticeship, or a career in technical education in the entrepreneurship wing that we're building at Crossan High School. This can be a golden ladder to a new life. But let me say this clearly. Progress on crime starts with accountability. We desire a criminal justice system that is transparent and humane. We desire a system that guarantees us both justice and freedom. Justice from an inequitable criminal justice system and freedom to come back from the store with a bag of groceries or pump gas without being assaulted. Our pride and our history tells us that this is what we deserve. We have to build this power as a community together. Prince Georgians, I see a future for our county now, which I couldn't see years ago. In the past, we didn't fully embrace our potential or our power. For too long, we let others rush in to create a narrative of our county. We let others say who we are and determine what we couldn't be. But now, we hold the pen. Now, we embrace the history that makes us proud. Now we express our power and how it can transform the future for Prince Georgians. For over a decade, even during COVID-19, we've led the state and the region, and now everybody knows what we've always known. The truth is that we've always had everything we needed to be successful right here at home. And no matter what comes later, we're ready. We lead now because we've had practice with change. The same pride, the same spirit that helped us remake that red house on the hill is our power. We can make progress and we can lead even during times of rapid change. Now, I can see a Prince George's County where our sons and daughters have the newest and best schools, the brightest teachers and the most access to opportunity, where our children go on field trips to quantum computing labs, a Prince George's where every resident from every walk of life has a safe and stable home for their family, 
where every one of us can easily reach a grocery store. I can see a Prince George's County where people from across the state, the region, the nation, and the world arrive at our Grand Station in New Carrollton, where our friends and family from across the county receive world-renowned medical care right here at home. A Prince George's County that can depend on our fleet of electric buses to clean up the air and arrive on time. I see a Prince George's County that is a destination people visit for sports, entertainment, or to appreciate natural beauty so close to Washington. I see a Prince George's County that people study, a place where urban planners, mayors, educators, and leaders come to understand how we built something so livable, equitable, and free. I see a future for our county that people write about, progress that leaves even the greatest minds asking, how did they do it? We want a county where our future has no limit but our imagination and our progress has no cap. With our pride and our power, we have already started to make this future real and we're building it together. Our success now is not unexpected. We have an exceptional skill set. We have the power to change. In the four years since I stood here and asked you all to labor with me, we have accomplished so much. Our labor has helped us reach the position of power we now hold. And more than anything, our success is proof that the only threat we face is if we stop working together and turn on each other. I once heard an old folk tale of three beautiful African water buck who were close friends. They did everything together. What the water buck didn't know was that a lion was constantly watching them, hoping to catch one off guard and get a nice meal. But it would be impossible to take on all three at one time. The lion was very patient, but the water buck had a strong bond. But one day, the three friends had an argument, and instead of mending their differences, each one went their separate way. The stalking lion couldn't believe his luck. And as soon as the crisis drove them apart, the lion took down the first water buck, then the second, and finally the third. When they stuck together, the water buck prospered. But when trouble came and they were divided, each one fell. In governing, it's okay to disagree. But disagreement doesn't mean we have to splinter and go our own way. We're all pulling toward the same goal, to make this Prince George's County work for all Prince Georgians. Right now, our county is poised to use our pride and power to grow our reputation and influence in our region and our state in a generational way. What we must remember is this strength this power we have does not come from our positions or titles. It comes from the people, the residents of Prince George's County, and is strongest when we stick together. When we're united, we can do something transformational for this community we love. When we're united, we can shield our residents from violence. When we're united, we can rid our neighborhoods of food deserts and provide secure access to quality education and health care. When we're united, we can set a strong course for this county's future. And just as I reject developing a tolerance for violence, I reject the harsh words we sometimes use when speaking to and about each other. Public service is a tough calling. But we shouldn't fall prey to the belief that our political discourse must be coarse and bitter. We have the power to rise above the discord that has become too commonplace in our nation. We can flex our power while engaging in politics that we can be proud of. As residents and as leaders, we can be examples and lead the way together in Prince George's. As a county, we've labored and we've grown stronger and we still have much more to accomplish. Over the next four years, we'll use our power to do what we could not do. We'll break down barriers that could not be broken. 
will use our skills to show the world that there is no limit to what we can achieve. One of the Underground Railroad's most famous conductors and one of the baddest women to ever walk the streets of Maryland was a woman named Arminta Ross, better known to most, most of us as Harriet Tubman. She was born in Dorchester County, but I like to think she moved like a Prince Georgian. Harriet suffered major injuries at the hand of an overseer that led to health challenges which she battled throughout her life. Her illness diminished her value in the eyes of slave traders, but in her weakness, she found power in the God of our weary years and silent tears. She said, I prayed to God to make me strong and able to fight, and that's what I've always prayed for ever since. Harriet Tubman fought because she was fiercely proud of who she was and where she came from. She escaped bondage and found freedom. But it wasn't enough for her to experience freedom alone. She had to share it with someone else. She didn't achieve all she did through rugged individualism or the narrow confines of her own concerns. She was strongest when she fought to help others experience freedom with her. And she became one of the most powerful people this world has ever known. We know and can identify here with her life's theme. If you hear the dogs, keep going. If you see the torches in the woods, keep going. If they're shouting after you, keep going. Don't ever stop, keep going. If you want a taste of freedom, keep going. Imagine now what she saw in the Van Horn house, that little red house on the hill. As she led others to that stop along the railroad, she was full of hope, full of pride. The promised land was finally within reach. But all the struggle to get to that point would mean little if they didn't keep going. What power would they have if they were content to stay or afraid to continue? Harriet knew they couldn't stop. Prince Georgians, this is our moment. Our labor has led us to a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to set the course for this county's future together. So when circumstances try to shatter our positive self-image, we'll keep going. When unforeseen challenges try to break our stride, we'll keep going. Congressman Hoyer, when they change the rules at the 11th hour to try to block us from generational opportunity, we'll keep going. When outside forces dismiss our power and talk about what, quote, PG County can't do, we'll show them what we can do. And we'll bring them along with us and we'll keep going. Because when we go together, we are unstoppable. An example for the rest of the nation, there's no limit to what is possible. Prince Georgians, we can't stop now. And the same God that gave Harriet the power to fight will cover us. Joshua 1 and 9 tells us, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. When I was sworn into office the first time as state's attorney some 12 years ago, my great uncle, the late Reverend Dr. Lester James said, Angie, if you remember who sent you, you'll do just fine. I have never forgotten who sent me, and I have never forgotten you. Day and night, I carry the concerns of Prince Georgians with me, and it is my solemn promise to you that I will never forget you, and I will never forget the God who sent me. I'm humbled by the awesome opportunity that you all have given me to lead this rare and wonderful community once again. We are proud, we are united, and we are Prince Georgians. We are powerful. Thank you all so much. May God continue to bless you, and may God continue to bless Prince George's County. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, our county executive, the Honorable Angela Also Brooks. That little red house on the hill, pride, power, progress, 
using the power of her integrity to reclaim her time through the vote to continue to serve our county. So we want to thank you, County Executive, for that riveting speech, for those remarks, and for your continued commitment to Prince George's County. We are better for you. We are better for having you. So please join me next in welcoming Father Roberto Cortez, pastor of the St. Mark the Evangelist Church of Hyattsville, who will now deliver an inspirational prayer. My dear friends, let us take a moment to thank God for all we have been given and for bringing such a fine group of dedicated public servants to celebrate a common vocation, the good of God's people. With that, let us pray. God in heaven, it is our privilege to invite you here as the guest of honor. It is our request that you will bless public servants, but more than that, and it's our first importance, that you walk with us. I ask on behalf of the, those gathered here that you will indeed bless each of these government officials. Give them the grace to make the difference for the good of all in the years ahead. Grant them the knowledge and dedication they will need in service of this county. Give them, gracious Lord, a sense of what is right and good and appropriate in the often confusing time we are all facing. May they draw courage and strength from you. May they serve our community with integrity and honor. For all of these government officials and their families of which they are part, we ask that they may make a significant contribution to the general welfare of our society. May they especially be a blessing to those whose lives they will touch. Gracious God, thank you for being here this morning with us. Thank you for your loving, fatherly presence. For it is in the name of Jesus that we pray. And we all say, Amen. Thank you, Father Roberto Cortez, for that prayer. And now, please join me and welcoming the Oxen Hill High School Advanced Choir to perform two selections for us. And uh, under the direction of Mr. Ross, and Mr. Ross, thank you very much. I 
had the courage to keep going on. I had the faith when all hope was gone. I had the strength to keep going on. I I had the courage to keep going on. I had the faith when all hope was gone. I had the strength to keep going on. I can make the difference. I can.
Thank you. Please, let's give them another rousing round of applause. The Oxon Hill High School Advanced Choir under the direction of Mr. Rafaelito Ross. So today, we have gathered to witness the administration of the oath of office for some extraordinary leaders. This has been an invigorating morning that will lead to many new and historic chapters of progress in Prince George's County. The people have spoken. Their leaders are in place. Great expectations have been placed on each one of you and in each one of you. The people of Prince George's County have great leaders who are dutiful and ready to selflessly serve through good, difficult, and challenging times to continue the progress, the pride, and the promise of Prince George's County. I want to especially thank the Honorable Prince George's County Executive Angela Also Brooks and the Prince George's County Council for this opportunity today. You know, I arrived in the land of Prince George's County in October of 1995, and I will tell you that all of these years later, I am Prince George's proud, a Prince George's resident, and I consider myself a native of Prince George's County. So thank you for giving me the honor to serve as your mistress of ceremonies. Please, may God bless Prince George's County. May God bless the United States of America. Join me in welcoming Dr. Michael Freeman, pastor of the Spirit of Faith Christian Center, to deliver the benediction. Pastor Freeman. What an amazing ceremony, right? 
Come on, why don't we all stand so that we may prepare ourselves to be dismissed? Amen. Did you tell the person sitting next to you how great they look? Did you take that opportunity? Take that opportunity. You, you don't want to miss that on the way out. Now let's look to the Lord so that we may be dismissed. Now, Lord, thank you for this amazing time that we've had together. Wow, thank you for the promise, the peace, and the prosperity that you have given this amazing county. As though we have been so graciously giving by you what you have designed for us to have from the foundations of the world. Now, as we leave this place, we thank you for traveling grace and mercy. We thank you that no weapon formed against us will ever prosper. And in the words of King David, he says, he's been young and now he's old and he's never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I thank you for the promise that you have given us that you will never leave us nor forsake us that you will be with us even until the end of the world. Thank you for this amazing team that you have gathered here to represent this county. I thank you, Father, that they will come before you constantly seeking your face for direction, that they will have the wisdom to guide this county so that we will lead peaceable lives. I thank you, Father, that every assignment that the evil one has set up against this county, we render it powerless now through the shed blood of Jesus. Now the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you his peace is my prayer. In the name that is above every name, the name, Lord Jesus the Christ, in whom we love and also serve. And you're not uh, permitted to leave until you shout a hearty amen. amen. You may be dismissed. And as we prepare for the recessional, we'll ask you to main, remain where you are for just a moment as our platform party begins to recess. Thank you. And what an inspirational few hours we have enjoyed together this morning. Before we dismiss, there are several people we would like to acknowledge, please. That would be State Senator District 24, Joanne Benson. Chief of Prince George's County Police, Malik Aziz. And the Maryland National Park and Planning Commission, for your tremendous support and partnership today. And now, we will have all of our distinguished dignitaries and platform guests to please stand for the recessional and exit the stage. To all attendees, we have ushers who are positioned to escort you from the building